All right, welcome everyone. We will uh, get one more um, week's worth of um, reading done uh, for today. Last time I'm going to be here at the airport, then I'm going home for the day. <clears throat> okay, so we are on March 19th. A naughty person, a wicked man, walked with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall be broken. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Chapter 6, verses 12 through 15. <clears throat> A college student loved to play practical jokes. Whenever he found an opportunity, he pulled a gag on one of his friends. No one was safe from his onslaught. Eventually, the people he associated with avoided him and hated to be around him. Only when he was alone and lonely did he realize that he had been wrong. He attempted to reconcile with his friends, but they had too often heard his apologies just to be the butt of another unkind joke. The young man who chose to live by the practical joke had to pay the price. <clears throat> our actions affect so greatly how our lives will go. We do things which sometimes seem insignificant to us, but to others they are important. One of our largest responsibilities as Christians is to guard our words and actions carefully, always making sure that what we do to others is what we would want to have done to us. us. Wickedness can, can take seemingly harmless forms, but once the seed is planted, no matter how small, it can grow forth into a mighty tree with roots which reach deep. Lord, I wish to do no one harm. Would that I could allow me to spread goodness and light wherever I might go. Save me from the calamity which will befall those who live carelessly or foolishly. March 20th. <clears throat> These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look. Chapter 6, verse 16 and 17a. The new girl stepped cautiously into the classroom. She flinched as she looked at the people in the room. They were all dressed in the finest fashions, had nice hairstyles, and carried expensive purses and book bags. She looked down at her faded blue jeans and sneakers. A flush came to her cheeks. When she looked up, she saw that many of the girls and boys were looking at her with condescending sneers. She wished she could sink into the floor. Before she could control it, tears came into her eyes and she turned away to avoid further embarrassment. Out of nowhere, a voice came forth. Hi, my name's Janet. What's yours? Carefully, the young girl looked up to see a smi smiling, friendly face. An attitude can be as damaging as an unkind word or a forceful blow. <clears throat> we wield great power in the way we treat other people. If we think that we are better than other people, it will show in our manner, our looks, our words, and our actions. God despises the proud and haughty attitudes that people develop. Our duty as Christians is to look at all individuals as equals, brothers and sisters whom we can reach out to. When we look down on others, we do not just withdraw our reach to them, but to Christ as well. Dear Jesus, help me to see your spirit in all people I meet. Be sure that I never turn from another person due to pride or haughtiness. Teach me to love those around me as you would, have, as you would love them. March 21st. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a lying tongue. Chapter 6, verse 16 and 17b. <clears throat> the plan sounded like a good one. The gentlemen had sat down with each of the people at the retirement village and explained their policy to them. The cash changed hands, the policies were signed, receipts were given, but that was the last any of them ever heard from the gentleman. He had taken advantage of their situation and made them separate from their hard-earned money. All that could be done was to feel badly that they had been taken in. It was hard to accept that people like that could get away with it. It was a crime. So often the deceiver seemed to get away with so much. 
They lie, cheat, and steal, and then live it up. It seems that the only ones who get ahead are those who are willing to hurt others to do so. Nothing is further from the truth. God loves those who will be honest and trustworthy. Lying is abominable in the sight of God, and no one who lives by deception will have any place in his kingdom. The liar will have to answer to God for what he has done, but those who have lived in the truth will be blessed of God. Men and women who remain true to God's, God's will can rest in the assurance of God's grace. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I hope that I keep my tongue from hurting anyone through lies or deceptions. Purify my thoughts and my words that they may reflect your grace and love. March 22nd. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, and hands that shed innocent blood. Chapter 6, verse 16 and 17, C. Just 100 years ago, it was common practice in the western part of the United States to settle differences with drawn guns and knives. The law of the land was survival of the fittest. Justice was decided by whoever held the greatest force and talent at the time. Law officers were often men who wanted nothing more than to shoot other men. <clears throat> During those days, many innocent people died at the hands of ruthless gunmen. Men, women, and children lived in terror, never knowing which day might be their last. In every age and every place, there are people who live by the rule of violence. Their regard for human life is minimal, and they inflict pain wherever they travel. They are seen as strong when, in fact, they are sadly weak. Their power is very temporary, and they will be required to atone for their wrongs one day before God. How much better it is to live a life of peace and love. Peacemakers, the meek, those who mourn, they are blessed in the sight of the Lord. Better to be numbered among the blessed than to fall among the accursed. It may seem that the instigators of violence rule this world, but, is, but it is the rule of Christ which is the real power, and it reigns in the hearts of all who believe in him. Rule in my heart with peace and love. Let me do only kindness to those around me, never harm. Grant that I might be protected from the people who would do me harm, yet let me always face others with forgiveness. March 23rd. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Chapter 6, verse 16 and 18a. The young teacher crossed the parking lot at the end of a long school day. The week before had been an unbelie had been unbelievably difficult. Grades had come out, and that always spelled more pressure for the teachers, especially when there were some who didn't quite make the grade. When the young teacher got to her car, she felt her heart sink. All four of her tires had been slashed. It happened all the time. Living in an urban area and teaching young, young people who often didn't want to be taught was a constant risk. Every time grades came out, someone decided they were going to get even. Nothing ever seemed to change. Nothing was ever done to catch the kids who did it. She turned away disgusted and went back to the school to call for a ride. A lot of people live for revenge. They hold grudges. Let them burn inside, then explode forth to do whatever damage they can. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. When someone wrongs you, your duty is to forgive, not to punish. If someone has done you an injustice, God will call that person to answer for their actions. Nothing good can come from a spirit of hurt and revenge. It is through forgiveness that God can enter our lives and make everything all right. Heavenly Father, pride often causes me to plot in my heart against those who have wronged me. Create in my heart a spirit of forgiveness that I may do everything in my power to heal with your great healing love. March 24th. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Chapter 6, 16 and 18b. Boys will be boys, said the mother of two mischievous young children. Her boys were into everything, causing calamity wherever they went. The children would terrorize other boys and girls, but the excuse was always the same. If the pair caused injury or pain, they were rarely scolded. Their mother merely laughed it off and chalked it up to youthful exuberance. 
There is a difference between the energy of youth and destructive, disruptive behavior. The curiosity of young children is wonderful, but unwatched it can turn to disaster. A child with a package of matches can wreak havoc. There is nothing to be gained by letting children rule their own lives. They need guidance to protect them from things which might hurt them or others. The same is true of God in our lives. We so often need guidance and wisdom in order to avoid disaster. What may seem harmless to us may in fact be the path to mischief and away from God. It is wise to ask God's help as we weigh in our hearts what is good and fruitful to do and what is bad or destructive. With his help, we may hope to walk in paths of righteousness and avoid calamity. There are times, O oh Lord, when I feel myself drawn to do things that I know I should not do. I all too often rush into situations which I should avoid. Please guide my steps and protect me from straying, Father. And then the last one is uh, March 25th. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a false witness that speaketh lies. Chapter 6, verse 16 and 19a. The little girl threw herself into a fit, thrashing around on the ground, spitting and ranting. The crowd stood around her in amazement. Wide-eyed, the little girl pointed at a woman in the crowd, and immediately the magistrates took hold of her and whisked her off to prison. Thus goes many stories of the Salem witch trials in America. The fabrications of a few over-imaginative children took root and grew to monstrous proportions. Men and women lost their lives because of the lies of babes. A lie is the worst form of stealing a person can commit. It robs the victim of, incredi of credibility and honor. It strikes silently and cruelly, and often it allows no room for defense. When we lie, we display selfishness like no other. Jesus said that he was the truth. If we want to get close to Christ, we must put the lies and deceitfulness from our hearts. Our words must be kind and reflect the concern and care of Jesus Christ himself. When we are honest, we take hold of the truth of Christ and spread it to others that we meet. When we lie, even a little bit, we deny, our, we deny the power of truth and reject the goodness that being honest brings. It is by living honest straightforward lives that we move closer to God in all his glory. I wish that I could be the person you want me to be, Almighty God. I find that I am dishonest both with you and with myself. Power me with the spirit of truth that I might always live honestly and openly in your sight. Amen. Okay, so we will go ahead and um, leave it there, and I will see you guys in the next video. God bless.